how to use AI ethically and effectively for College Board AP Capstone courses. In this video, we will cover the College Board rules and how to use AI ethically, and we will look at three practical strategies in which you can use AI to support your research. According to the College Board, generative AI tools use predictive technology to produce new text, charts, images, audio, video, etc. The most well-known example of generative AI would probably be ChatGPT, which we will be using later when we look at the three practical strategies. The College Board has laid down a policy on acceptable generative AI use. General principles are 1. Generative AI tools must be used ethically, responsibly and intentionally to support student learning, not to bypass it. 2. Accordingly, all performance tasks submitted in AP Seminar and AP Research must be the student's own work. 3. While students are permitted to use generative AI tools consistent with this policy, the use is optional and not mandatory. The College Board also gives a summary of acceptable use. Students can use generative AI tools as optional aids for exploration of potential topics of inquiry, initial searches for sources of information, confirming their understanding of a complex text, or checking their writing for grammar and tone. However, students must read primary and secondary sources directly, perform their own analysis and synthesis of evidence, and make their own choices on how to communicate effectively both in their writing and presentations. The College Board also provides clear examples of acceptable use and not acceptable use for various phases of work. Please pause this video for the following three slides so you can read the table in detail and have a full understanding of the College Board policy. Overall, College Board reminds us that a student's work should reflect their interests and their voice, which is far more interesting than what generative AI produces. We will now introduce three strategies for students in which they may use AI ethically and effectively for research purposes. One, using ChatGPT to assist in developing a research question. Two, using Chat PDF to assist in choosing relevant sources to read. Three, using ChatGPT for peer review and feedback to your first draft. In the initial stages of research, when you have chosen a topic and narrowed down to a more specific topic, you may be struggling to think of ideas for research questions. Well, ChatGPT can be a great partner to help you brainstorm some great ideas. Here is an example prompt. Generate a list of 10 research questions about, in my case, the impact of background music on learning. Let's see what ChatGPT can come up with. As you can see, ChatGPT has created a list of interesting research questions that approach this topic from various directions. The one I'm most interested in is actually the first one. How does the genre of background music affect cognitive performance in different learning tasks? However, you should not copy paste this research question because it would go against the rules of the College Board policy on how to use AI. Also, this research question needs some refining. Remember that effective research questions have appropriate scope. They're not too narrow or broad. They are specific. They're significant, meaning they address the so what factor, or why should anyone care? They're interesting to you because you're going to be spending a lot of time researching and writing about it. And also, they are unique. They address some kind of gap in research, something that hasn't been studied before. With this in mind, we can adapt to the research question created by ChatGPT. Firstly, we should identify the variables in the research question. In this case, the genre of music and different learning tasks. Following some preliminary research, I have decided to investigate the impact of lo-fi music for my specific genre of music. From reading various sources, I've discovered a gap in research. Other studies have investigated reading fluency and memory, but no one has yet looked at writing fluency. Therefore, I can change this research question to say, how does lo-fi background music affect cognitive performance and writing fluency? Now we have our own research question that is acceptable and has been developed with the help of AI as our brainstorming partner. The next stage of research is to go to Google Scholar and start to look for sources, academic journals and articles about this topic. In my case, the impact of lo-fi music on learning. Immediately, I can see a list of many sources and you may find you are overwhelmed at this stage on which ones to dedicate your time to reading. 
This is when AI may be a useful tool again. If I click on a link to a PDF of one of my sources and download this PDF to a separate file, after that I'm going to open up Chat PDF. Now I just need to drag and drop the PDF into Chat PDF. This will allow me to interact with the PDF thanks to the power of AI. Straight away, Chat PDF has offered some interesting questions that can give a good summary of the source. The first question reveals information about the methodology of the study. The second question offers information about the findings of the study. The third question considers future implications of this study on educators and students. I can also ask my own questions about the document in case there's some specific information I really want to find out. Chat PDF is like an AI enhanced control or command F when you're really looking for something in a document and want to find it quickly. Using Chat PDF effectively will allow you to get a good sense or gist of a source before committing to reading it in detail. Bear in mind that some of these articles will be 10 to 20 pages long. You don't want to commit to reading it all yourself unless you know it's going to be relevant. So, if you use Chat PDF, you could save yourself a lot of time. This will allow you to discard sources and filter them just to the essential ones that you need to read in detail. Remember, according to the College Board policy, any source that appears in your bibliography, you must have read yourself. So, this tool purely helps you to select which sources you should spend your time reading. AI tools can be helpful at every stage of the research process. So once you've finished writing the first draft of your report, you can also use ChatGPT as a virtual partner, and through the process of peer review, it can give you feedback. To generate effective feedback, the prompt is quite important. Your prompt should start like this. You will give specific feedback on the academic writing quality of my research report. This is the rubric to guide your feedback. These statements indicate what a high scoring report achieves. Next, you need to copy paste the rubric for whichever essay you are writing. In this case, I've copied the independent research report or IRR from AP Seminar. You can find all of the rubrics online. You just need to copy paste the information for a high scoring report for each row of the rubric. For the IRR, there are six rows. The next part of the prompt says, now apply the rubric to the following essay and provide no more than 100 words of feedback. Write one comment about the positive aspects of my report and write three comments providing some constructive advice about what could be improved. Finally, the last part of the prompt. This is the essay for you to evaluate and give specific feedback on. And then you just have to copy paste your essay into the prompt. Let's plug an example into ChatGPT and see what it comes back with. So, this is the feedback from ChatGPT. Positive aspect. Your essay thoroughly explores the existing research on the impact of background music on learning, demonstrating a comprehensive understanding of the topic. That's good news. Constructive feedback. 1. While the essay effectively summarises previous research findings, it could benefit from deeper analysis and critical evaluation of the methodologies used in those studies to assess their strengths and limitations. 2. Transitions between sections could be smoother to enhance the flow of the essay. Consider using clearer signposting language to guide the reader through the structure of your argument. 3. Ensure consistency in citation style throughout the essay, particularly in-text citations and the bibliography. This will enhance the overall professionalism and academic integrity of your work. Now I have three clear areas to improve which I can focus on during the proofreading stage. I can now improve my essay, make changes before I even send it to my professor. This will hopefully allow my professor to focus on different areas that need improvement in the report. However, I should give you a quick word of caution. As it says at the bottom, ChatGPT can make mistakes. Consider checking important information. In this example, I do agree with the three pieces of feedback. However, in some cases, the feedback might not make sense. So you should remember, in the words of Jonathan May, a research associate professor of computer science from the University of Southern California, generative AI doesn't have facts per se, it just knows what word should come next. Put another way, ChatGPT doesn't try to write sentences that are true, but it does try to write sentences that are plausible. So please be aware of this if you intend to use any of the strategies advised in this video.
Good luck to all of you with your AP Capstone courses. If you have any other ideas for how to use AI ethically and effectively with research, please share them in the comments below. And if you found any of the information and strategies in this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.